there, I'm Georgie from Bop DJ, and today we're going to be looking at the new Denon DJ Prime 2, which has just come into stock with us. Let's take it out of the box and have a look. So here it is, as you can probably guess from the name, it is a completely standalone two channel unit. No computer is needed to create playlists or analyze tracks whatsoever. And there's a really powerful processor inside this unit that's running Engine OS, which will be able to do all of that for you. So in the box, we've got a handy dust cover that just slots onto the screen so that can protect it while it's not in use. There's a display cleaning cloth. There's a power cable, of course. We'll just get it plugged in. We've got a USB cable included as well, just in case you wanted to plug it into a computer to use it to do a firmware update. You might need to use it for that. Or you might want to play from a computer's engine library, so you'd need it for that as well. There's also some screws here, just in case you want to use the inbuilt hard drive bay, which is on the bottom some stickers and a nice shiny quick start guide. Now I've got a USB stick here with a record box library on it so I'm just going to plug it straight in and it should be able to read the playlists. So it's saying there's an existing music collection found on Mooncat USB 1 which is my USB stick would you like to import? So it'll take a little time to match playlists and track metadata so I'm just going to press yes and this should bring through all of my playlists and all of my cue points as well from my record box library. Okay, so it's just imported everything. So I'm gonna to go to the playlists and have a look, see if it's pulled through my playlists. Yes, it has, and these are all of my record box playlists. So in addition to being able to analyze on board tracks from any USB stick, it also can play tracks from the streaming service Tidal. First of all, you'll need to connect to the internet, of course, and you can do that via the ethernet port at the back, or you can connect to a Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna to connect to a Wi-Fi, so I'm just gonna press down this button, go to utility, Wi-Fi, open, I'm gonna select my Wi-Fi and then put in the password and that's connected. So now we're going to set up Tidal and then it's telling me to go to link.tidal.com and use the code below to log into your account to activate this device. So I'm going to do that on my laptop here. I'm going to have to just sign in to my Tidal account on here. Okay, so that's linked to my Tidal account now. So all you need to be able to do that is um, a computer, a laptop, or any device that's connected to the internet, and you'll be able to do that as long as you've got a Tidal account and you log in, um, you can connect it to the player and then you can stream straight from your player. And you don't need to do that again, um, it just works. You just need to do that one time and then it'll just work with your account whenever you switch it on in the future. So Tidal has over 60 million tracks for you to choose from, so you should never be stuck with any out there requests that someone might give you out of gig. You've even got Metal, Lamb of God, Trivium. We've got all of it here. We've got everything you could ever want here. Gospel and Christian. And you can play tracks from Tidal along with tracks from your own library as well. And it still puts the album art in the middle of the jog wheel as well when you're playing tracks off Tidal. So that's pretty cool. So any request that you might have, any weird sort of request, you'll be absolutely fine. You also don't need either an ethernet or a Wi-Fi connection. You can just use the Wi-Fi connection to connect to a hotspot on your mobile, just in case um, you can't connect to the internet any way else. So yeah, that's really, really useful. And that's still not it. You've still got loads of options to plug in different storage devices. So you've got three USB inputs. So there's one on the top and then there's two on the back. There's also an SD card input as well, and there's also a hard drive bay underneath where you can install your own hard drive 
uh, and that could be obviously up to however many terabytes. It's a 2.5 inch bay for a hard drive, so that could be however many terabytes you can fit on a hard drive that size. So you wouldn't even have to remember to bring your USB sticks or anything with you. Okay, so now to look at the physical features of the unit. So the touchscreen is seven inches, it's HD, and it's pretty intuitive to use. It works pretty much the same as uh, an iPad or uh, any tablet or a smartphone. You swipe right when you wanna load a track. And you can also use the QWERTY search function. So if you go to search, you can type in whatever you like there and it will bring up all tracks that match your search term. You can even rearrange your playlists all via the touchscreen as well. And you can choose between horizontal and vertical waveforms as well. You just need to press shift and then press view. And then you can choose between horizontal or vertical. You can also audition any track straight from the playlist if you just press the little icon. And then you can just press anywhere on the timeline of the track and it will play that through the queue on your headphones. So that's a really nifty little feature. So moving on to the jog wheels. These jog wheels are seven inches in diameter, which is a great size and they feel really good, really nice to play on. They're of course touch capacitive. There's also a HD screen in the middle as well. You can also set the middle of the jog wheels to show either the artwork of the track you're playing or you can just set it to your own logo if you want to. The centre display will also show the loop size of the current loop that you've got set. So on the top of the unit you'll see the effects section. So turning the effects select knob will trigger a effects menu to come up on the screen and that's got a list of 14 beat effects that you can choose from. And then you've got two other knobs for changing the effects time and the wetness or dryness of the signal. On the mixer section, we've got a three band EQ and a filter and your gain knobs is standard. We've also got two up faders and a cross fader, which you can change out for a more scratch friendly one if you wish, such as an in fader. Uh, on the front, you've got cross fader assign controls. You can set either side of the cross fader to A, B or through. And then you've got the contour knob, which allows you to set it to more of a smooth fade or to a more sharp cut if you are a scratch DJ. Here in the headphone section we've also got your normal Q and master knob and then you've got the headphones level knob and then you can just press this split button down if you want to hear the Q in one ear and the master in the other. So in the browse section we've got this view button which toggles between the performance and the library views and then you can press and hold that so then it will bring up the menu for utility source and your preferences. So there's eight multi-function performance pads with four performance modes to choose from. And so you've got hot cue, loop, roll and slicer. You can also press the vinyl button here to toggle vinyl mode on and off. And then you've also got stop time, so at the minute it's on fast. And if it's on slow, it sounds like this. So you can turn sync on or off here uh, and you can turn key lock on here as well. This is the key lock button. So that means you can play, if it's off, then it will play at whatever pitch the track would be at. But if you have it on, then no matter how fast or slow you play the track, it will not change in pitch. So this is with it off. <laughs> And this is with it on. You can also change, if you press shift, you can change the range of the pitch as well. So that goes all the way up to minus or plus 100. Okay, if we take key lock off. Now if we put key lock on and we slow it all the way down, we can see the time stretch algorithm of the engine OS system working really hard. So 
that's at minus 40%. <music> So yeah, the algorithm built into these units is pretty good. If you hold down the key lock buttons, that will put key sync on. So the one that you're holding it down on will sync to the key of the other one that's playing. So the beat jump here will skip through the track at as many beats as you've set this auto loop knob to here. So if I set it to four, it will just go through four beat jumps. And if 64, obviously it will just go through the track faster at 64 beat jumps. You can also enable or disable slip mode with this button. You can hold down this button and use the jog wheel to edit your grid. If your beat grid is a bit off, you can use that to really easily just slip it into place. So this sensor button here will trigger what's essentially a slip reverse. So your track will still play underneath, but it will do a reverse. So it's called sensor because I think you're meant to use it to censor out any naughty words during gigs where there might be kids running around but I'd be more likely just to use this for a cool effect. You can also use the shift button to do just a normal reverse without the slip. So you can use the auto loop knob to change the length of a loop. whenever and however you like. So that go from 1 32nd of a beat all the way up to 64 beats. Also, if you press the shift button while your loop is playing, it will shift the loop to the left or to the right on the track. And of course, just use the in and out buttons to set the in point of a loop or the out point of the loop where the playhead is currently on the track. So on the back, we can see we've got two dedicated XLR mic inputs. Um, they're combi mic inputs. On the mic section, we can switch both mics either on or off, and there's a level knob for each mic. There's a button to turn on 
the torque over function on and off. And you've got three band EQ for the mic inputs as well. There's also an RCA aux input um, and you can change the level of that independently here and you can also press down this Q button to hear the aux input through your headphones before you play it out on the master. And for the master output you've got a choice of XLR or RCA and then on the front here you've got a choice of a small or a large headphones jack. Also as mentioned before as well there is an ethernet port at the back as well for you to be able to connect to a, a wired internet source but you can also use this to link your player to a computer just in case you wanted to um, sync a light show to your set as well. So overall the unit feels uh, really good quality but also light enough to be portable as well. So for someone with a lowly upper body strength like me it's pretty easy to um, carry around it feels portable to me so it will probably feel portable to you as well it weighs in at 7.2 kilograms so easy enough to carry from a to b normally i think you might be expecting a lot less features from a unit which is the younger sibling of a flagship product but i've had so much to say in this video it really doesn't feel like you're you're really missing out on much at all um, in comparison to the Prime 4. The biggest differences are the slight smaller screen, obviously the two less channels, and um, you don't have the external connections at the back. But other than that, I think you've pretty much got most of the features that the Prime 4 has. So you are getting your money's worth, I think, from this. So overall, I think it's a great unit for either a bedroom DJ or a professional mobile DJ as well. The Prime 2 is available to order online or over the phone now, so give us a call or click the link in the description to order over the phone or online or to get some more information about it. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.